Live from the Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. This is the YouTube channel vlog show in which video games, flash game show gameplays, along with sports and wrestling news, are the norm. This is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, good times, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now, here is the host of the show, the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself, Mr. Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer. Well, hello there, everybody. Hope your day is about as good as mine, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, you are watching... Yet another episode from my big beefy man cave here in New Bedford, Massachusetts. It's Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, episode number 15 of the show. That's right, it's today, September 15th, appropriately, episode number 15. Would you believe that? 15 on 15, ladies and gentlemen. What is happening, everybody? Hope you guys are, like I said again, having a very blessed day. Hope you guys uh a, a, a day better in mind. Mine is good, but hope yours is better. That's what I have always hope for the best for everyone out there. And hopefully you guys are rocking and rolling and to going totally awesome. As you know, I had a lot of positive feedback on this channel and in this room and everything else. I want to thank everybody for that. I am totally, totally very, very happy to hear this. So we're gonna we're gonna keep on going, keep this train, this, keep the shenanigans train rolling. What's going on? And I got a new intro, and then I got a new intro, and I decided to straighten out my outro too. So if I if you see me bleed or anything, I just try to finish shaving, man. So I want to look good for the public, man. That's how I do things, okay? And sometimes you know, even though looks should, should not be everything, but sometimes presentation is. Sometimes, and um, I got at least look presentable. I don't want to look like a bum off the streets going. Uh, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> I'm like, what? What happened to this guy? Is this guy on crack or what? <laughs> it's New Bedford. Anything in it be impossible? But well, I don't. I don't do drugs, man. So <laughs> people will look at me like like I'm doing drugs. No, I'm, I'm just being goofy and having fun and high. I'm high on life. I'm high on life and on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you. So I'm just having so much fun here. So we're gonna do some AEW. Um, this is a, a purple. Do you think it's a 205 Live? No, there's no 205 Live here. AEW is like the Forbidden Door type deal. AEW Impact. Some, uh, some of that. And uh, this is uh, AEW Diamond from last night. And this took place in Albany, New York. September the 14th, 2022. As you know, the road to the Grand Slam is next week. And check this out. The semifinals. The two semifinal matches bookend this event. All right. It kicked off the show. And... Another semi-final match ended for the show. This is for the vacant AEW World title due to CM Punk's injury and not only that involvement in a fracas, which also got the Young Bucks suspended and stripped of the trio's titles that that they were won. But as you know, this is going to be something else. Um, semi-final for the AEW title tournament: uh, John Moxley going against former th two or three-time TNT champion Sammy Guevara. And Guevara, shockingly, without his lovely wife, Ty Mello, at ringside, we, I don't know if it was a plan or not, but uh, the match was going well. Moxley had everything well in hand until uh, Ty Mello and her best friend, Anna J. A.S., came down to ringside. Anna J. got the referee distracted. Ty Mello low-blowed uh, John Moxley. And Renee Young, Puckett, was not very happy about that. She tweeted it. She said, get your dirty hands off my man, something like that. And uh, and in the end, Moxley did, despite that, Moxley did pick up the victory. Omi Sammy Guevara, so he facing the winner of the Chris Jericho, Brian Danielson matchup later on that night. Later on last night. But MJF won, won in the mic. He dressed in the crowd, dissing Albany as usual, and, you know, fighting John Moxley. But he said, we're getting down to business, the reason why he's out here. He introduces the team that helped him win that casino chip to give him the number one contendership, and that would be Stokely Hathaway, a guy since he's known since he was 19, obviously, he's form, the former Malcolm Bivens. Um, he said he's been best friends with him since he was nine, uh, MJF was 19, which is really cool. And then it was The Firm, with Ethan Page, and, 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 and the funny part is, the funniest part is Stokely Hathaway hugs Morrissey, Morrissey's standing there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, probably Morrissey's probably thinking, I don't know who's smaller guy's annoying, Enzo or this guy right here. You know, forget about it, you know. 
Yeah, S A W F T, soft. <laughs> a little bit of joke here and there. Anyways, uh, Stokely Halfway cuts a promo about when MJF came to him and said, "Hey, listen, you know, and all this." And he said that each and every member, you know, has something. W. Morrissey does want anything the hell the heck he wants because he is seven foot tall and you can't teach that. <laughs> Lee Moriarty, he wants the ROH Pure title, currently held by Daniel Garcia. The Gun Club want the tag team titles, Austin, Colton, Gun. They said they're sick and tired of uh, being in the shadow of their broke ass daddy. Oh, really? That's really mean. That was really mean. When it comes to your fam with family, family blood is thicker than water. And then Ethan Page wants the All Atlantic Championship. So, um, so that's what three to four, uh, three to five guys they want championships. Morrissey, I say take, have him take the TNT title from Wardlow. You know, you don't want to call him Wardlow's rap either. But might I digress? Well, Alex Marvis interviewed Jungle Boy and Lex Nair interviews Jay Lee about their matchup last night because they. Um, the Jungle Boy was not in a very good mood, obviously, because what Luchasaurus did to him and all that. So, they had their matchup, and it was a hard-fought matchup, and despite that, that, that Sanjay Jutt, who's almost out of his mind, and all that, ended up, uh, you know, Jungle Boy ended up picking the victory over um, over Jay Lethal. Hook and Action Bronson will team up for the very first time. Action Bronson will make his AEW wrestling debut as they face 2.0. Uh, cool Hand, Angelo Parker, and and Daddy Magic, Matt Menard. Those two guys, you know, those two guys remind me of the Quebecers. They're all from Montreal, Quebec. All they do is a lot of this. Always loud mouths. <laughs> And then I, Alex Marvez interviewed, uh, you know, talking about Albany Pizzas and they're known for their pizzas. Luigi Primo uh, came out. Know, Luigi Primo getting pizza and Ethan Page kicks him in the face. Hey, dude, I like pizza. I know so do you, but please. Uh, he goes, I'm doing something for once, taking this job seriously. And then uh, Dan Housen comes up. Hey, Egon. Calls him, I don't know why he calls him Egon. You know, I think he watched too much of the, of the Ghostbusters, you know. Egon Spangler, you know. 80s reference, kids. Google it. Soundwave. Okay, anyways. <laughs> and so, and Dan House, and, and, and then Ethan Page goes, you know, I want to be king of the Atlantic, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to beat up the court jester, and that's you this Friday night on Rampage. Tomorrow night on Rampage, Dan Housen, ass boys. Ass boys, yes, yes. Hang on. Hey, yes. KT Cruiser. I like, I like Dan Housen. That guy is funny. Okay, what you, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I know he's supposed to become some kind of demon or Pazuzu or something like that, but, no, but he's trying to be an entertaining dude, uh, his, his character's very entertaining here. Egon, yeah. uh, yes, hey, this, uh, this, uh, Lima guy here, uh, he's wearing a Soundway t-shirt, hey, very nice for the evil, he probably give me a shout out, oh, anyway, that's Lima or Lima Bean, I hate Lima Beans, <laughs> anyways, um, might I digress, they're going to defeat each other. Darby Allen does more skateboard stunts. And then Matt Hardy admires Darby Allen to the point where he's challenged him to a match at Rampage. That's going to be a great match of one-on-one. -on -one because Matt says he reminds him a lot of his brother Jeff. We will see. Um, hey, who knows? A new partnership can come out of that matchup. Who knows for sure? I would like to see that. Well, Powerhouse Hobbs, in short work, beat up uh, Matt, D, uh, Matt D. Martino in about, what's it, two or three seconds? Hobbs just picked up the victory. And he dresses a new chapter, probably going after a championship. But Ricky Starks came to the crowd and decided to brawl with him. And then busted up Hobbs in the lips. So, looks like those two ain't finished yet. Death Triangle addresses uh, Swerve and Our Glory. Uh, they're talking about adding more championships to their already trios titles. The tag team uh, matchup was happening. The Lucha Brothers challenged Swerve and Our Glory. And Swerving on Glory did pick up the victory. The Acclaim came out, and Max Caster did not do a rap, but he says, you interrupt one of my raps again, I'm kicking your rear end in. In fact, next week on Grand Slam, we're taking those titles. So, another matchup. So, I think the Acclaim is due to get those championships. And Max Caster been over with the with the AEW crown now, which is really, really super cool. I mean, dude, dude's just out there, you know. And Anthony Bowens, you know, always, I always have a funny way he goes, Send that me, daddy ass! Well, he's a crazy dude, but I gotta love him. 
So Alex Marvez interviews Pac, and Pac is like, what do you mean? We're still the trio's tag team champions. So they lo lost, and then Orange Cassidy did an orange punch in the face. He's got a double champion? I don't think so. And that match is going down next week on Grand Slam. Crazy things happen, man. Crazy things happen. And Tony Storm and Athena addressing Britt Baker, who basically took out Hickory. It was supposed to be originally to uh, Tony Storm and Hikaru Shida. They're my favorite girls. But Britt Baker took out Hikaru Shida during the before the match. So what does Tony Storm do? Well, she got an old friend from NXT, the former Ember Moon, a.k.a. Athena. And he said, hey, we're taking care of you and Serena Deeb tonight. Don't know about you and Jamie Hayter, Britt Baker, but nobody can stand you. So they had their matchup, and Britt Baker and Serena Deeb did win. But, but the uh, Deep Mater tried to attack Athena and Storm with a chair. Jimmy Hayter stops Baker, but hits Storm and its chair and walks away from Baker. Baker's like, Baker's like, I'm sorry, and all that good stuff. And Rebel in their corner. Well, Smart Mark Sterling, Tony Nese, and Josh Woods address Samoa Joe. And I believe that match, I think, will happen at Grand Slam. But then, um, between Josh Woods and Samoa Joe, we'll see what happens. Uh, AW, now the other semifinal, Brian Danielson versus Chris Jericho, the winner, will face John Moxley next week in the Grand Slam. It was a heck of a matchup. Brian Danielson did pre Chris Jericho. Moxley comes down and basically shakes hands with Brian, with Brian Danielson. So both members of the Blackpool Combat Club will go at it. Either way, the Blackpool Combat Club is going to be having a world champion in their stable. That is for certainly sure. Yeah, so tomorrow night on Rampage, we're going to be having a lot of fun here. So, that is it. That is all the time we have on the show. My announcer will take you out on the on the 16th episode of Sweet 16. The first very episode of Tomorrow and Thursday is Press Your Luck. As you know, I'll play the uh, the today the Elizabeth Banks version first and then the Peter Tomarkin version first. But here's the difference. There'll be no returning champions. We're starting things off fresh and new. i got to make sure I get that squared away, all right? I'll see you guys later. Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget Production. And in association with a sweet bumbling bofo raver telepictures and distribution. See you next episode and have a very blessed day.